the President of the United States currently, and that's Barack Obama and his performance. Look at the recent poll numbers that came out, and it shows declining support. His approval rating now 58 percent. Back in January, it was at 66 percent. What's your assessment of how he's performing? Well, first of all, those numbers are still strong, so they're relative. Second of all, I think Americans, understandably, are becoming very, very concerned about the deep, deep political, I mean, economic uh, debt that we are laying on future generations of Americans. We are committing generational theft. Just last week, the, uh, the estimate of the deficit was $1.1 trillion just for the first nine months. It's going to be $1.8 trillion. That's by a factor of two, the highest in any time in peacetime history. I mean, we are spending and spending and spending. Who, who five months ago thought we would own Chrysler and General Motors? Who thought we would own AIG? Who thought mm -hmm. we would own all these banks and institutions? It's, it's, a, it's a most massive movement from the free enterprise system to the government in the history of this country. The president says, be patient. Mm -hmm. How much more patience do you have? Well, I, I, th I also think it was interesting. The president uses a very uh, effective rhetorical ploy. He, he says he sets up the position of the opposition. Like he said, there are those who said we wanted to do nothing. Who was that? We wanted to have a stimulus package. We wanted one that would help small business, the generator of jobs in this country, that would cut the corporate tax from 35 to 25, that would help small businesses buy equipment and hire people. That's, that end would have immediate shovel-ready projects. And we predicted that most of this quote, stimulus package that was passed through the Senate in a partisan fashion would not have any real short-term effect. So guess what? We're finding out only 10 percent of the money has been spent. A lot of it has been on ridiculous projects. So um, I say with respect, we Republicans had a positive alternative. It was over $400 billion. We've had an alternative budget. We had an alternative to uh, the omnibus spending bill. And but 40% so, yeah. of the stimulus package included tax cuts. It included tax cuts, but a lot of them were in the wrong direction. Why not make sure we focused on small business and also on corporations which now have the highest tax rates of any uh, of any country in the world. Here's what his top economics advisor said this week, Larry Summers to the New York Times. People know that problems of this seriousness cannot be turned around in six months or nine months, Mr. Summers said. One of the president's strengths in his extraordinary candor is his extraordinary candor. The president has been honest with the American people about the enormity of the challenge and the amount of time it will take to turn things around. Then the president yesterday in his radio address said, this recovery act has worked as intended. Is he leveling with the American people? Well, I'm, I'm sure the president is doing everything that he can to try to help their, this economy. But is he leveling? Is he being well, straight? he's either not leveling now or he wasn't leveling at the time of the passage of the stimulus package because they said the maximum unemployment would be at 8%. That was what they told us. It's 9.5 going to 10 they said that most of these projects were shovel ready and the money would go out as very, very quickly. We know now that that has not happened. And even that 10 percent is a little mm -hmm. deceiving because it really hasn't actually been used. So what they promised us would be the result of the stimulus in a short term has turned out not to be true. So I'm not saying that it's, quote, not leveling, but it's certainly not factually correct because they said unemployment would be a maximum of 8 percent and probably closer to 7. Could you support a second stimulus plan if it oh, comes, comes down? I, I think that would be the biggest mistake we could ever make. Why don't we focus on tax cuts? Why don't we put focus on small businesses? Why don't we, instead of saying we're going to increase taxes mm -hmm. to pay for health care reform, why don't we say, look, let's ease this burden on the small businesses particularly. And I keep going back to that. Who generates jobs in America? Not General Motors, not Chrysler. The people that generate jobs in America, the small business people who all over, all over my hometown of Phoenix, Arizona, are shutting these storefront uh, enterprises of theirs. And yet General Motors is too big to fail, and so is AIG. But they're too small to save there's something wrong with that picture, and that's why the American people are unhappy.